shake too much because this trampoline for it. I know. I'm just <laughs> walking it on be it. Okay. Again. What's up, you guys? Welcome to the channel. I am super, super excited about this video. So we are here at Power Monkey Camp, and I am with Julie Fouché. This person, I can't believe that she is on the channel right now. I'm so excited. Uh, she's been to the CrossFit Games four times. Four times. She's studying to be a doctor right now, and she's just all around an awesome person. So I just wanted, I was like, <laughs> I asked her and I thought she was just like, no, absolutely not, I'm not gonna be on the channel. <laughs> but she was totally down to be on the channel, so I just wanted her to kind of tell her story. It's a really, really cool story, so. Maybe introduce awesome. yourself and then kind of just tell your story. Well, thank you so much. I'm <laughs> yeah. really excited to be here. And yeah, it's been fun to be able to meet you in person mm -hmm. and hear even more about your story. So yeah. I'm just excited to be on the channel. Yeah. So thank you for like, having me. When I say I'm going to be excited, when I first started getting into CrossFit and stuff, like CrossFit's made a few videos on her and on you. And like I remember watching them and just being like, man, that person is so cool. It'd be really cool to meet her. And the fact that we're, it's yeah. just really cool to me. So That's the cool thing about yeah. CrossFit, you can meet. At, like it's so online, but you could, there's so much accessibility. You can mm -hmm. meet anyone. So yeah. yeah, so it's been a blast. So mm -hmm. I actually found out about CrossFit when I was in college, mm -hmm. and I had a background. I did gymnastics growing up, which obviously is great background for CrossFit. <laughs> I'm so, so jealous. I'm, I'm so, so jealous. lucky from that from that aspect. Mm -hmm. And then I did some track and field a little bit in high school, mm -hmm. and then got to college and really didn't know what to do because I was so used to having a coach telling me what to do yeah. every day and having a team yeah. to practice with and that's what I really loved about working out but I knew I wanted working out to still be a big part of my life and eventually about halfway through college mm -hmm. I met my husband in the we were in the dorms we were just in a, someone's room watching a TV show mm -hmm. and he pulls up CrossFit.com and I was like I was kind of interested in him but like didn't want to show it and I'm uh, like what's CrossFit.com? You're, you're like oh yeah CrossFit yeah. me too totally. That's so cool. <laughs> so I well as soon as he explained what it was I immediately was like so interested and okay. thought and what, okay like, this what, is for me. What year was that? This was around 2009. So that was before like it was pretty big by then but like before it's it got was, to where yes, it is now. Way before like the games were very different then. Yeah. It was the games had not even been in the StubHub Center or the Home Depot Center. Yeah. It was still in Aromas in the ranch. Oh, okay, so okay. it was very new and definitely I, I didn't get into it Go. that early. Like th there had still been the games for yeah. a couple of years. It wasn't brand brand mm -hmm. new but only a couple of years old. Yeah. So um, I found out about CrossFit and I was like, oh, I need to try this. It sounds mm -hmm. perfect for me because it has some gymnastics and it's different every day mm -hmm. and it's always exciting and you get to work out with other people. It sounded like something that would be super fun. So um, we, my husband and I, now I'm husband, ended up, we ended up dating and we joined the local gym near our school in Ann Arbor, Michigan, and just fell into a great community mm -hmm. there. Loved it, had great coaches from the beginning and um, decided, a few people from the gym decided they wanted to train for competition. So I was like, okay, I'll do it too and just see what happens. And we did some local competitions uh -huh. in the area throughout the year and I just surprised myself every step of the way and then ended up actually qualifying to the games that year Oh my in 2010. gosh, are you serious? The first like year? Yeah, the first, it was about crazy. a year after I had started and it was so different then. Like yeah. I, the, I was telling someone today the skills that I had and the ability that I had to qualify to the games in 2010 today wouldn't even get me to regionals. Isn't that crazy? It's crazy. When I see people that can go to regionals, I'm like, you're amazing. Yeah, <laughs> you it's know? The, like, the level of fitness of yeah. everyone has just gotten so much better mm -hmm. every single year. So it's been cool to see that development. But, um, but yeah, so I went to the games in 2010 and then I, I actually ended up doing, you know, way better than I expected. I placed mm -hmm. fifth that year. Wow. And then I went back, I had one more year left of college. So I finished college and around that same time was when I was applying to med school. Uh -huh. And I had always kind of known that I wanted to go down that path and started along, you know, it's a long process to take the MCAT and do your applications and all this stuff. And so I was doing that and wasn't really sure where CrossFit was going to yeah. go, but I wanted to keep going along my path. So I did and I applied to med school and I ended up going to Cleveland following, mm -hmm. so my boyfriend at the time he had gone to Cleveland the year before and I amazingly got into the same medical school really? yeah which was really wow. crazy like I never expected because it was it's a very specialized school and very small class wow. so I were you guys in the same class no oh, I was okay. one year behind yeah, <laughs> oh, okay. one year behind so I went there followed him a year later and then I competed in games for the second time like the summer mm -hmm. right after I had moved to Cleveland and 
again um, placed fifth. So <laughs> same like, thing. <laughs> yeah, it was an interesting. So close. It was yeah, it was interesting. But mm -hmm. I, I every year I've learned so much from competing and training and. At um, that point, sorry to interrupt. But like yeah. at that point, had you like decided I want to like. Like, my goal is to get really good at CrossFit. Like, had you kind of switched from, like, oh, I'll just see how I do, to, like, okay. Like, now yeah. that I, you went to the games the first time, after that, were you just, like, mm -hmm. I want to go back and I want to do better than I did last year kind of thing? I think it's interesting that you asked that because I think it was around that time, maybe 2011 or 12, that at first I was just doing it because I was, like, oh, I made it. Of course mm -hmm. I'm going to go. This is fun. Oh, I made it last year. Of course I'm going to do it again. Yeah. And it was just a natural thing, and it became such a big part of my life. But then around 2012, end of 2011, 2012, I was when I was starting my first year of med school, and that's yeah. when things started to get hard. Jeez, yeah, I can't even imagine. And so that's when I things had, started to get I had to really stop and think about it. Yeah. Why am I doing this? Mm -hmm. You know, I don't have to do this. It was really difficult, to, and but I, I really wanted to prove to myself that I could, and to mm -hmm. prove to other people that I could do that. And I knew it was possible because I'd seen my, my husband go through his first year of med school, and I saw that time commitment and I saw he was actually able to train and he competed on a team that wow. summer after his first year of med school so I was like I think I can make it happen but it was very challenging yeah. and I had to really stop and ask myself why I was doing it and why it was so important for me and um, once I answered that question it was very easy and I I really enjoyed training and had a great year and ended up that's when I ended up finally making the podium and getting second in 2012 so that was a great feeling that's, yeah. because I really felt like I had sacrifice a lot yeah, put bet. a lot of effort yeah, into it that year to make it to make it work um and it's crazy like how you said like when you the first year you went like the level of fitness so it, uh, the level of fitness got better and you placed every better. single year yeah that's really cool yeah everyone it was so fun just a lot of the same competitors year after year and just how much better every mm -hmm. person gets so it's it's really amazing and and then after that, I knew that my, during my second year of med school, school was going to be a lot harder and a lot more time consuming. Mm -hmm. So I kind of had always known that I was going to have to step away from competition that year. Mm -hmm. So I ended up taking one year away from competition and doing school. I had to take a board exam. And then in my medical school program, I had two years of research, or I had one year of research. And oh, yeah. I basically spread that out over two years. Okay. So my school let me take an extra year, and I was able to compete then for two years. So you basically were able to, like, you weren't as slammed. Yes. In the, okay. Yeah. So it was a much better, I was living a much more balanced life. That's good, yeah. And I was able to kind of live like an athlete, which is really fun. And so nice to be able to really prioritize your mm -hmm. training and do all the things you need to do, like eat well and get enough sleep and mm -hmm. recover and all those things. So I had a blast. And um, that first year coming back 2014 was a little bit challenging because, you know, I'd been off for a year. Yeah. And I was like, oh, maybe I lost too much ground. And yeah. all these, you know, all these women are getting so much better every year. Well, and the year. fact that you even got back after taking a year off. Yeah, like, so amazing. it was a little nerve wracking, but it was, I mean, again, super fun mm -hmm. process. And to be able to see yourself make progress is so rewarding. And so, um, so that was great and I I ended up climbing my way back to the podium by the last event I was I was never in the top three through the whole competition wow. the very last event I was able to sneak in that's there. awesome so, yeah so that was really amazing and and then I knew I had one more year left and I knew that I was gonna have to go and finish school and it just wasn't gonna be feasible for me to keep training mm -hmm. after that. So I was like, I have one more shot. I'm gonna, I've gotten third place, I've gotten second place. Mm -hmm. Like I have one more shot mm -hmm. to, get, to win the games. And I had an amazing year of training. Mm -hmm. I had great training partners. I had so much fun training. I remember seeing the videos of like this year yeah. of training. Yeah, like, it, was a, it was really one of the best years of my life, I think. And felt like I was a lot more balanced with school and training and everything. But it was a busy year. It was like, you know, my, my husband and I were getting married at the end after the games would have been. We, um, bought our first house. It was like a lot of yeah. big things going on. Yeah. And we, so I went to regionals, that was in 2015, mm -hmm. and was feeling great. Definitely was feeling like the fittest I'd ever been. I was ready to go on and try to win the games. Mm -hmm. And then day two of regionals is when I tore my Achilles, right in the middle of the competition. And it was obviously, I kind of knew it had happened when it mm -hmm. happened. Um, but was in a little bit of denial, and then yeah. once I went and sat down and realized what had happened, it was obviously very difficult, and um, I didn't see my season ending that yeah. way. And you put so much work into it, and so it's difficult to see. I remember seeing change. like the video of when it happened, and like mm -hmm. just thinking like, what even happened? Because yeah. it was like a it was just a box jump over, right? It was a box and was jump, like, yeah. 
And it's funny because what happened was I jumped and then I looked behind me because yeah, what it feels are, like is like someone hits you in the back mm -hmm. of the leg. And then a bunch of people told me afterwards, as soon as they saw me look, they were like, we knew it was your Achilles because it's yeah. a classic response you see. Wow. Like if you see someone playing basketball and then uh, what happened? Thing. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so yeah, if, interesting that it was ca yeah, captured on TV. Yeah. We know exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. but, but yeah, it was obviously very emotional. But then I feel like by some miracle, I don't know, I was able to really process it pretty quickly. And, mm -hmm. The next event was a handstand walk, this, which oh, is I was amazing, you'd bring right? This up. Yeah. And so I, I'm like, people are asking me, "Are you going to keep going? What are you going to do?" Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know, this is my last chance to mm -hmm. compete. I'm going to go out there and enjoy have a good it, time. Least, yeah. yeah. Now I have no pressure. Mm -hmm. like, there's no expectation, so I might as well enjoy the time that I have there. And so I ended up going out and doing the handstand walk yeah. with my boot on. And this video, you guys, <laughs> like, I was I was waiting for her to bring this up. There's a video, and I'm gonna tr uh, I'm not sure if I'm able to put it we'll, over this video, we'll but we'll find it. We'll find. I'll we'll put it in the it description. Yeah. You guys, there's this video of her with this big freaking boot on doing a handstand. How far was it? Oh gosh, I don't know. I want to say. I don't know if it was 300 yards or 150 yards, something. It and was, you did unbroken, right? Yeah, it was one like, way down, then you come down, and then one way back. It, so it is the coolest thing because she she gets done and it's like she's just like, all right, well, that was <laughs> like just. It didn't feel easy. Oh uh, yeah, but like <laughs> it but is the very, co oh man. Yeah, I was very determined to make it the whole way without I remember falling. Remember first time I saw I it, like, like I was like kind yeah. of tearing up. I was just like. Yeah. No, oh, I mean that, I've heard that man. from other people. It was very emotional and and then afterwards was very emotional for me just because the whole community was so supportive Support, yeah. like I went after that event and I like had to talk to someone for an interview and then after I was done I had to walk all the way back to the athlete area and it was on the opposite corner of the floor and so I'm out there and all the crowd is there obviously looking at me because mm -hmm. no one else is out there because they've yeah. already gone back and I had to walk all the way back and I like I'm getting like goosebumps just thinking yeah. about it but they were just amazing and just started applauding mm -hmm. and I was walking and I was just like crying <laughs> and it's just that's the CrossFit community yeah. like they are there for you when you are in your most vulnerable mm -hmm. position and you are like going through a tough time they're there to help lift you up mm -hmm. and so that's it was unlike anything else I've ever experienced yeah it was amazing so cool! Yeah. I love that. I was, I was, I, I was like waiting for you to get to that part. Yeah. So I was like, I can't, I can't wait. Like, it's yeah. one of my. It's so funny because it's obviously very devastating in the moment, but yeah. one of my favorite memories competing. That is, yeah. I can't believe you just said that's. Yeah. That's awesome. Like, it, isn't it crazy how like sometimes things like in the moment seem like the worst thing ever. Yeah. Like, they really are the building blocks of like what's going to make you a better person, what's going to make you stronger. Absolutely. Like, it might seem like the worst thing at the moment. Like for me, like you know, struggling with what I struggled with, like, when I was in high school going through that, that sucked. Yeah. Like, it sucked. But I know for a fact I would not be where I am right now if it wasn't for those things that I went if through. If you didn't go through you that, know? right? It's so true. Yeah. It's so, so true. Challenge and yeah. struggle makes us stronger. It makes us Absolutely. Stronger like, today. people that have everything handed to them, I mean, no offense to them, but, like, yeah. usually their drive and, like, you know, it's just not there because right. they haven't had that, you know, that to fight for it. Yeah. Um, so a question that I have that I think is like the obvious question is now that you are not training to compete, mm -hmm. but I've seen you training, so you still <laughs> kill it. I'm but like, training. yeah, what's like the difference? Like, is there like, yeah. you know, as far as volume, are you training less? Are you, yeah. you know, so. Yeah, volume's probably the biggest mm -hmm. one. So it's just a time issue. And back in 2015, when I was really focused and how most of the CrossFit Games athletes are training today, it's like your full-time job. You can't, yeah. You know, it's like training like four three, four times to a day, five right? to six to seven hour ordeal. Yeah. But, um, and then the other things besides the training, it's like making sure your nutrition is good, making sure you're spending enough time warming up and cooling down yeah. and getting a massage or seeing the chiropractor mm -hmm. or whatever it is to make you make sure your body is in the best shape it can be. And the mental prep mm -hmm. too, it's very time consuming. So that's the biggest thing is mm -hmm. after I was done, I said, okay, I'm going to do five. I'm going to commit to do five days a week for one hour a day. Wow. And that was my goal. And for the most part, I've been sticking to it. Obviously I've been much more lenient with myself yeah. too, because like, this isn't the end of the world. If I miss a training session yeah. or if I go do something, and now I value other things. Before, when I was training for competition, it was my top priority. Yeah, so absolutely. I would, training would come before spending time with friends, it would come before, Family, like, before going everything. out, everything. Mm -hmm. And so now, if something else comes up, of course I'm gonna prioritize yeah. that, and it's not a big deal to me. That's awesome, because I was, in, I was the next question I was gonna have was like, 
was it difficult, you know? Because mm -hmm. I know for me, like, I love working out, and like, if I miss a whole day, like, I know for me, I'm just, man, yeah. I, w I wish I would have yeah. been able to work out today. And yeah. like, for you, I mean, you were a completely different level. Totally So like, different. I yeah. can't even imagine like, what it went from like, I don't know, doing maybe three to four times a day in the gym yeah. to like, going to one hour, like. It was an adjustment, but honestly, I think one, having the injury and then the recovery helped um, because it was such it a different. It almost forced you to. Yeah, because yeah. I had to slow down and it was a lot more about rehab and focusing on that progress instead of all the training um, but then sure it's hard of course I feel better when I'm when I've done my workout yeah. and I feel good that day but um, you can't let like one day get to you mm -hmm. I guess so it's and, and it, I also have like shifted my focus in my priorities like we talked about yeah. so knowing that I have these other priorities and if I'm spending time or spending attention on those that's more important to me right mm -hmm. now so yeah so well bringing that up like yeah. what what are you focusing on now i know that you have your podcast i want to yeah. talk about that yeah. and like you know like what's important to you now yeah so well i mean yeah. for family for me is always most important mm -hmm. and now um, my husband and i are married so yeah. that's i try to spend some time with him <laughs> um when i get like a, a week but in a year we're, you know? yeah <laughs> we're um I'm graduating from med school in May, and then I'll start residency in June. So that's going to be really that's going to be a huge change. Yeah. A huge change, and my main focus, mm -hmm. absolutely. And so um, that's what I'm looking forward to. And then I do have my podcast, mm -hmm. which I've been doing since I stopped competing, mm -hmm. and it's been just a fun way to keep in touch with the CrossFit yeah. community. And even I talk to a lot of different people that are, some are not even in CrossFit, but mm -hmm. just have to do with health and. It's been a really fun outlet for me. And then the training program, which I do, which is basically the workouts that I do, so five days a week for an hour, and then I just put that out there for anyone to follow. That's so. cool. It's like really good for people that might be busy and that yeah, want to work exactly. out. And then if, if Julie's doing it, it's yeah, it helps, should be good it helps enough. Yeah, keep us all on track. Yeah, yeah. So that's why I like it. Awesome. Well, again, thank you so much for being on the video. I have one thank question you. that I like to ask everyone. Yes. So. If there was like one thing that you would tell to someone that might be like starting out or just someone that wants to improve their overall, not even just fitness, but overall health and wellness, yep. what would that be? Like, what would your tip or your mm -hmm. thing that you told them be? I think, I think it definitely is different for every person, it's true. but I would say probably, and maybe not for everyone, but start small and pick like, pick one habit that you want to change. Mm -hmm. and. And I think it is important that it's a daily habit, mm -hmm. something that you have to do every day. And then as you do it, it becomes something that is just a new good habit mm -hmm. because it's really, habits are really hard to break. Yeah. So start with one thing and then you'll gain momentum. Awesome. All right. Well, I just want to say again, thank you so much. Like, thank you. This is so cool <laughs> to be, for being on the video. And I will make sure that I link like anything that awesome. is important down in the description. If you guys want to follow our Instagram, your just everything, the podcast and everything. We're actually going to record a podcast. Yes. So check with it out. Me and her. So on, for her stuff. So again, thank you guys so much for watching the video. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. There was one other thing that I wanted to say. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look up if I am. <laughs> it's my sign awesome. Obey the warning signs. And when there are flashing lights or wigwags, don't attempt to cross until they come to a complete stop.